And let's define what is coils. Coils basically are formed where the conductor is wounded around a core or any other form, for the matter, to create an inductor or electromagnet. So we have a core, a conductor around it, look at the pictures. When we do that, we create an inductor. Remember the reactive energy that we talked when we, deal, when we dealt with AC and power factor. Here we're creating an induction device. A coil is an induction device. And there is a function of how many turns, what type of wire, uh, how, uh, how density the turns are, what is the, length, the total length of the wire. To, to, to come out with the electromagnetic field that is being generated because of this coil, which determines the amount of flux and the current on the conductor, conductor inside the coil. And let's see how actually the electromagnetic fields is generated. When we do, let's look at the picture on the bottom. When we have a coil and we Input current, we are talking about AC and not DC. When we, when we, um, um, a transient, we, well, actually we're, what we're looking at is a change between two states, from a lower state to a higher state. This change is like an AC. It's not a fixed direct current situation. There's a variation between two levels. These variations create electromagnetic field. So we enter uh, the coil itself with a current. Obviously, this current will um, flow all along the coil itself and will go out. So we have I in and I out. This by itself creating a flux, creating electromagnetic field. Because it's creating a magnetic, a magnetic electromagnetic field, this field has a direction and it actually creates a magnet south and north. Look at the directions of the arrows. That coil contains the field within it. The field, the electromagnetic field is inside the coil. The once the, the, the beams, the fields go out of the field, they actually come around and come back. But we have, we have a concentrated field, electromagnetic field, inside the coil. Now let's look at the uh, picture on the left. The picture on the left says that the direction of the current is in one direction in within that coil and another direction, which is the same direction, on both sides of the coils. So basically we have two directions of uh, fields. Let's look at the electromagnetic fields associated with coils. And I'll read it with you together, so, and then I'll explain a little bit different, uh, different things in, in depth. Electromagnetic coil is an electrical conductor, such as wire, in the shape of coil, spiral or helix. And these two pictures kind of demonstrate it very good. Now the advantage of using a coil shape is that it increases the strength of the magnetic field. The meaning of increases the strength of the magnetic field is first of all concentrating the field and increasing the intensity, meaning the number of lines, the force itself of the magnetic field itself. But most importantly, concentrating the lines, concentrating the field itself. The magnetic field generates, generated by the separate turns of the wire all pass through the center of the coil and add up to produce a strong field there. So they all pass through the center. This is very, very important. If when the coil will have a lower diameter, that means and will have a high number of turns, 
and high and large current that will go in the returns. It means that the electromagnetic field inside this limited space inside the coil will be very, very strong, very intense. Let's continue with the electromagnetic fields. There is a right hand grip rule. Look at the uh, position of the wire, uh, of the hand. Look at the position of the thumb and the direction of the current and the magnetic field. And based on Lorentz force, which is the picture on the right hand side, we can also see the direction of the force. So if we apply current, the picture on the right, if we apply current to a conductor, and this conductor runs between two poles of a magnet, north and south, and obviously between the two poles there is a magnetic field. And when a conductor runs in a magnetic field, and we uh, provide current to this conductor, a force based on Lorentz force is being generated. And we have the equation of the force, which is the multiplication of the intensity of the uh, field, the length of the cable, the amount of current we apply to the wire, to the cable, to the conductor. That will give us the force that this particular wire will be subject to. And if we want to induce even more higher uh, electromagnetic fields, we have to do it that way as it is presented in the picture. Let's read the explanation on the left of the picture. The magnetic field lines, which are in red, of a current carrying loop of wire pass through the center of the loop concentrating the field there. When we actually configure that coil to be in this particular shape, we increase the concentration of the field to be in the center. Because the, the conductor having this current goes through the center of all these fields and in the middle of it, there will be a concentrated electromagnetic field. This is how we in, in, even uh, increase the intensity of the induction of the component. Motors and generators. Now that we understand that when we uh, apply a conductor and a current in the conductor within north and south pole, having an electromagnetic field between them. We create a force by means of Lorentz law. We can actually apply that to a motors and generators. And let's see how it does. A simple turn coil carrying electrical current rotates in a magnetic field between the two poles of the magnets. This is what the picture actually tells. If the coil is supplied with a current, the machine acts as a motor. If the coil is rotated mechanically, current is induced in the coil and the machine does act as a generator. That means that if I apply current to the coil, because of the two forces, and we can see in the picture that the two forces are in different directions, the coil will start rotating. A, a reversed force, which will be the, the, the multiplication of force number one and force number two, they are in different direction, will give us a torque. So it basically converting electrical energy to mechanical energy. Current into the coils will give us torque. So we actually having a motor. A motor is a machine that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. In this case, rotational mechanical energy, but it's from electrical to mechanical. A generator is the other way around, is exactly the opposite. We introduce um, um, magnets 
And uh, if the coil is rotated mechanically, if we will mechanically rotate the coil, then because of Lorentz, a current will be generated. So a, generated, a generator is the other way around for a motor. We apply mechanical energy, getting electrical energy. Motor is applying electrical energy, receiving mechanical energy. In rotating machines, the rotating element is called the rotor or armature, and the fixed element, the magnets, is called a stator. So in generator, for example, we mechanically rotate the rotor in between the magnets, which are the stator. And in the coils of the rotor, there will be current generator. Here is a very good um, um, presentation of the two opposite forces on both sides of the coil, of the coil as it rotates between the uh, north and south poles of the magnet has to be inside the concentrated electromagnetic field which is being generated because of the magnet but because we have a coil and because force number one goes down and force number two goes up the summation is a rotational mechanical um, uh, presentation and this is how the rotor rotates the rotor rotates because there's a force in one side go up and a force in the other side go down rotating the rotor because it actually hooked up on an axle now I want to share with you the same movie as we've seen previously in this course but now from a different point of view, different angle now we will look at this particular uh, film from a generator slash motor point of view as opposed to what we've seen previously in this course when I shared with you how we generate AC voltage or AC current. Now let's look at uh, this machine. Again, like we've seen before, we have a magnet, north and south, and it doesn't matter if the red is north or south or vice versa. We do have a coil rotating in between inside the electromagnetic field which is generated because of the magnet now if this is a generator or for this to be a generator a mechanical force external mechanical force should rotate the coil inside the field and we know now that when we rotate a coil copper wire inside electromagnetic field, a current is being generated, and this current we can see on the, on the meter, and because it's a rotational fashion, it's an AC current, one time go one way, the other time goes the other way, so it's actually creating a sine wave, that's in case it is a tank generator. In case it's a motor and we apply current into that coil, because of the application of current to a coil which is in the area within an electromagnetic field, forces are generated. And because the coil is in the shape as it is presented here, we have two opposite direction coils and there will be a mechanical rotation that's converting electrical energy, putting current into the coil, and, create a, and getting mechanical energy in the form of rotation, mechanical rotation, which is a motor. Again, generator is the other way around. We rotate it mechanically and we get current electronically. And I want to share with you, like I said in the beginning of the coil section, of the course, that basically every uh, type of component is a family of components. And here are coils as solenoids, not only as current generation of coil 
rotating inside a field like we've seen before. Here we have solenoids. And what is a solenoid? It's a wire wrapped around a metallic core which produces a uniform magnetic film. The, the emphasis is on the uniform. In a volume of space when an electric current it is passed through it. A solenoid is a type of electromagnet. When the purpose is to generate controlled magnetic field and convert its energy into linear motion. So now we're converting electricity to mechanics. It's like a, a motor, but it's not rotational, it's linear. Let's look at the picture on the bottom. If we apply current in one particular direction, we create a field inside the core in a particular direction that because of Lorentz law, a force is being created and either this core will go out or will go in. Depends on the direction of the current. Let's look at very, uh, very interesting um, a sketch on the right hand side. They are, it's a cross-section of the coil itself with the wires on top and the bottom. It's basically the same coil, same turns. And the direction of the field is in, from left to right. And that's because we provide current in a certain direction. If we change the current, change the direction of the current, then the force will be in the opposite direction. So either this road, this core will go out or will go in. It's enough for one transient to create this change. This one transient is basically a very high frequency, very short time or very high, big, large change in voltage. So it's like a very high frequency AC for a very short time. Going from lower level to a higher level voltage is basically a change in the voltage, a transient. It acts as a high frequency, creating a field. Remember, DC does not create a field. AC does. Or a change, a, a rapid change between level 1 to level 2. So a, a field is created, a force is created, which actually takes this world out or takes it in. And here, the structure, the internal structure of a solenoid. We have the housing, there is a spring, we'll talk about in a minute what this spring does. We have the two coils and we see the two wires that we apply the current to the coil. And we have the road. Now, the armature is connected to the road once we apply current to the coil, a force is being generated and this armament goes down, armature goes down and the road goes out. For the entire time that the current is there, this road will be outside. The armature will be pulled because of the force based on Lorentz law. Once I, I, I um, stop the current, the springs pulls, the spring actually pulls the armature back inside and the road will go um, inside to start the process in the beginning. Applying the current take, it puts the road out, leaving the current, stopping it, holding it, the road goes back. So solenoid is a device that it has a pin or a road or armature goes in, goes out. What we do? We apply current, we apply electricity, we get mechanics. Motor also apply electricity and receive mechanics. Converting electrical energy to mechanical energy. But motor gives us in a rotational fashion. Solenoid gives us in a linear fashion. 